welcome back to Sarah's table. Uh, you may notice that I am the only person here today, which is different than what normally happens. Uh, my name is Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her. And uh, tonight I'm going to be your host and your GM and your favorite person. And I'm going to remind you to take a sip of water. Uh, we're having a little bit of a, a late last gasp of summer sort of situation here <laughs> in Chicago. Uh, it's like 70 degrees today. So um, stay hydrated, everyone. I, you, do, I'll wait. Go ahead. <sighs> Delightful. Um, I am also going to be the player today. Uh, I am doing a one person RPG, a solo RPG called Gentleman Bandit, uh, written by Allison Arth. And um, you can find it on John Harper's Patreon, patreon.com slash John Harper. Uh, before I get into what the game is, I'm going to do a safety discussion. Uh, I know that I am the only one here and I know what my boundaries are, but I know that you at home may want to know what sort of a game you are getting into. So here on Sarah's Table, you will never find sexual violence, violence against children, or withholding food as punishment or starvation. So uh, this is probably going to be family-friendly-ish. We're going to say ish because of the subject matter, um, but I will never be graphic or gory. Um, so I guess PG-13 parental guidance suggested. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out what happens. Um, so Gentleman Bandit. You only need a couple of things to play. You need uh, this little four page Rule set. Do, 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 do. Little, do little Vanna White action right there. Um, you need a deck of well-shuffled playing cards with the Jokers inside. Um, and before I get started with it, I will shuffle again in front of you so that you know that I have not stacked the deck in my favor. Although, you know, I don't know the idea of, like, can you really cheat in a story that you are telling yourself? I don't know. That's like some sort of strange existential question that like we will maybe get into at a later date. Who knows? Like come back to Sarah's table later. Maybe we'll talk about how that happens. But um, yeah, anyway, you need that. You need a single six sided die. And I chose this really rad uh, wooden one, which I don't know that you can even see. There it is. Light on it. It's so um, I think it is by Art Artisan Die, and it is part of the. Yeah, it's by Artisan. Um, it's it's part of the like. The Rainbow. Wood collection, ta da! Because ra because rainbows and rainbows and rainbows. We like rainbows. Yay! Anyway, and then you need a writing implement. Um, and you need something to write on. My notebook has donuts on it because I'm a snack. So, uh, and you, if you play this game, should you choose it? Um, I found it on Drive Through RPG for seven dollars. It is a steal. Uh, you are going to be writing a 13-line poem to be left for the dead and the ones who discover them. I don't think that you are a terribly good person as the gentleman bandit. Although having the term gentleman in your name seems like you could maybe be leaning that way, but Alas. Here's the little intro that is written. They call you the gentleman bandit because no one knows your name. They call you a monster, a villain, a dealer of death. They call you all manner of unsavory, 
the most feeble epithets from shriveled minds. They call you the devil. But they don't know you. Not your heart. Your poet's heart filled with rage or filth or the expansiveness of true love. Not your grieving heart loosed over a chasm, making a sound like the sorrow of wolves as it plummets toward wet river stones, cracked bones left to bleach. Not your tarnished heart barbed with jealousy. Not your heaving heart beating in meter, callous or kind or barren. You are a highwayman of the old guard, possessed of a fine suit and even finer elocution, such that when you speak, you command. And when you command, people divest themselves of their valuables, the strong boxes, the sparkling baubles, the bricks of gold and other earthly goods too sublime for their irrepressible mediocrity. And in those uncommon instances, when your commands fall flat, you avail yourself of more overt means of coercion, your Remington single action, known to you and only you as Blue Bonnet. Harbinger of poor health. You call her this in Pravitas, your own personal joke. Blue Bonnet, muse and unmaker. Blue Bonnet, a final call to arms. When you discharge her in service to your cause, when you lead with hot lead into an unwilling breast, you wax eloquent, composing 13 lines of glorious verse, which you leave at the scene. A last stand for art and beauty, your lasting words to prove them wrong. So this game is you composing that 13 line poem because someone did not heed your words. And you had to use Blue Bonnet. So it's going to be like a real opera. Really super joyful. Um, there are a couple of things that happen in Gentleman Bandit. Uh, you use, each time you draw a card, there's something on it called motif and matter. And the suit is the motif. So this is spades. It looks like a spade. Gonna have to remember. Um, and uh, that is my motif. And it is loss. And then the number is the matter. And because this is a nine, it is who did right by you. So if this was the one that I had just drawn for the first line of my poem, it would be about loss and who did right by me. However, I'm going to use the optional rules because like, why not? Why wouldn't you? There's a thing called modes that you can do. If you choose, you can roll a mode which applies a poetic device to your work. So you take one D6, ta-da, and you roll your D6. And I got, uh, I got a one. And that is apply a rhyme scheme to your poem. Oh, no. Rhyme. I'm going to have to rhyme. Okay. I didn't figure that out. Apply a rhyme scheme to your poem. Uh, the one they gave as an example is A-A-B-B-C-C-D-D-E-E-F-F. -E -E Wrap it all up with a G because it is 13 lines. Um, so, all right, Sarah, get your rhyming hat on. I can figure it out. I can figure it out. Yikes. All right, let's try it. Let's go on this journey together. So I'm going to shovel them up. Again, I am using my, um, my Oz cards from the, from when I backed the uh, 5e Oz source book. It's coming soon and I'm 
super jazzed about it. Um, but they're just really pretty and shiny and like I use them every time I have to use cards in a game. Very excited about it. All right. So I'm going to rhyme. I'm going to figure out all of these things. And then also at the end, which is pretty exciting, um, you look at what hand that you have in in the 13 cards that you drew. You get to like pick you to look at at all of the cards that you drew and you get to look at it and put together your best poker hand. And then there are, um, there's like a position. It is, it is called a position that you move into uh, that you would start your next poem with because clearly this is not the last time that you're going to have to execute someone because they did not give you your things. So we'll get to that at the end. All right, here we go. So we are drawing card number one. It is the queen of hearts. So First line is love is the motif and what brought you to this fate. Okay. I am also going to draw the second one because they have to rhyme with each other. So <laughs> I have both of them uh, in my brain while I'm putting them together. Second one, ooh, another heart. So love again, which is great. And uh, it is an eight, eight of hearts. And so it's going to be, where are you going? So who did right by you? And where are you going? So I think, I feel like we're starting out in a place that is not terribly melancholy yet um this this is maybe a situation where like you know maybe he's got somebody at home let's see who who he's got that he's like doing this for um what brought you to this fate and where are you going um for the family family who who was always down on their luck. Family who was always down on luck, starting with maybe a childhood that did not support, um, that not supported financially in, in a way. Um, and so he has sort of turned to this life of crime to help support them. Um, where am I going? Where am I going? Let's find out. Uh, family who was always down on their luck. The... going into homes into homes and carriages and compartments I have snapped I think some of you thought that I was going to rhyme luck with something else, but this is a family show. Um, and so 
We're keeping it clean. Maybe. We're trying to keep it clean. We're... It's fine. Next. Next two lines. Next two lines. Okay. We have the... Well, it's TikTok, who is adorable. But it is um, the Jack of Hearts. I mean, Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds, which is... What do you wish you'd done and freedom? Oh, interesting. And then the Ten of Hearts, very heart heavy. And who wronged you with love? Oh, no. It was... Okay. Who wronged you? What do you wish you had done? Who wronged you? What do you wish you had done with freedom? Uh, rhyming. You guys rhyming? Rhyming is hard, but I'm going to trust the dice, even though I am a little mad at it, and I might put it in dice jail. Okay. Okay. What do you wish you had done with freedom? The jobs. Mm. I passed on jobs to live on the road. Until I met the girl. For whom time slowed. Yeah, I mean, okay, we're we're feeling it. There's something bad happening, probably, but that's okay. We can make we can make this work. Um, line one, line two, line three, line four. Let's do five and six. Let's figure it out. Okay, we've got seven of spades. It is about loss. Of course it is. Seven of spades. And it is where are you from? Loss. Okay. And then, oh no, six of spades. Also loss. What is your secret need? Where are you from? What is your secret name? Okay. So I feel like loss, I feel like the story that we are spinning here is that this gentleman bandit, he, he started stealing early to support his family. And Um, had the opportunity to go straight and he abandoned that because he met a girl and, you know, girls make us all stupid. Let's be real. So, so he went, um, went off s stealing things across, you know, across the land quote unquote, across the land. Um, I feel like this is a stanza that can be pretty direct. Um, I gave up home. I can never go back.
I have a home I can never go back. Uh, secret need. She promised adventure, but love is what I lack. This poor dude, like, no wonder he's out just making bad choices. And I, I realize, listen, I know that you're saying, Sarah, you're like in charge of this and this is what happens and you could make a happy story, but I don't know. I, it doesn't feel like a happy story. Like if you're a dude who is out on the road um, killing people because they will not give you their diamonds, you are probably not like a well-adjusted person, I would say. Next up. King of Diamonds, also known as the Tin Man. King of Diamonds is for freedom. Oh, and the, the prompt is, will you change? Will you change? And then... Got the Queen of... And I just like clubs. It's clubs. I never remember. I always call it puppy feet for anybody who has watched the show before when I have used these. It is puppy feet. Um, Queen of Clubs. Queen. Um, and it is uh, for fear and it's what brought you to this fate. Will, so will you change for freedom and what brought you to this fate for fear? Will you change? I want to give her up. But she's got a vice on my heart. What brought you to this fate? Fear. If I lose her, I want to give her up, but she's got a vice on my heart. If I lose her, It will stop. And I don't know if it will restart. The meter's a little weird. <laughs> But, you know, we're speaking from a deeper place in in ourselves. And so sometimes <laughs> the meter does not match up. I think it's going great. I feel good about it. Probably. I mean, he's not he's not having the best time. Um. Let's see what's next. Jack of clubs. We're back to fear. We're hanging out in fear. And it is what do you wish you'd done with fear? And then more fear. Just fear everywhere. Where are you going? It's the eight of clubs. Where are you going? What do you wish you had done? Where are you going? So, okay. Backing up. Where are we at? Ba, ba, ba. Started crime as a kid. Started stealing. Trying to support your family. Uh, met a girl. Got real stupid. 
went on the road, followed his heart. She seems like a pretty bad person, maybe worse than our unreliable narrator. Uh, this is a real Bonnie and Clyde situation. <laughs> um, he would like to break free, having a hard time. What do you wish you had done? And where are you going? If I just missed that train, I think they met, met on a train. I'm going to say they met on a train. If I just missed that train, she'd be a stranger. But with one look and one touch, I follow her into danger. Nine, ten. I don't think this is a um, I can't tell if this is about gentleman bandit like I don't I, perhaps he is writing it about the person that he has whose life he's taken oh gosh I don't know seems pretty autobiographical in my brain at this moment, but could be about the person that he is oft. Okay, we got the two of hearts. Who is love and who needs you? And then the nine of a diamonds, which is freedom and who did right by you. boy. Ooh, boy. Okay. <sighs> you know, like, rapidly coming to the end of this poem, and I don't know <laughs> um, how we are going to get our hero out of this. I don't know. You know what? I don't know that we are. I think maybe there's a chance. I mean, the gentleman bandit, which I keep wanting to say gentleman Jack, which is maybe because I have been watching that show on HBO, which is excellent. Uh, Excellent queer love story drama period piece. So if you're into any of those things, you should go watch that in a minute. Like finish up here first and then and then you can go watch it. Obviously, let's not let's not split our focus. Um who needs you? Gosh, you know, I feel like this is a hard question to answer with this character that I have. Come up with you guys like how often I just do weird pauses as my brain tries to catch up with what my mouth is doing or maybe my brain is moving too fast and it's the other way around gosh we're getting real deep into my brain today everybody it's an okay place to be sometimes sometimes are you missing the fact that I don't have other guests yet? <laughs> it just... Oh boy. Okay. Who needs you? Why is this line so hard? Like I feel like the other ones were were going pretty good. And then this one just is like tripping me up. Okay. 
I mean, I guess the answer could be no one, right? That's horribly sad, but I feel like it fits because I feel like the girl that he is describing doesn't need him the way that like he would want to be needed, like capital N needed. Okay. Let's go with that. I think when I am gone, I will not be missed. Not be missed. Mm, rhyming. Got to rhyme. We got to rhyme. The second one, which is who did right by you with freedom? I am gone. I will not be missed. Right by you. I think I have to twist this one in order to like make it fit with the rest of the story that I'm telling. Um, okay. I am gone. I will not be missed. And I might end up having to change the end of that last line. Okay. Oh, gosh. Endings. Endings. Can we have a conversation for a second? Um, I feel like endings have always been difficult for me in a story. I could do a cliffhanger. Decent at cliffhangers. But, like, stories for me just keep going. And so I I have a, a hard time being able to like wrap it up in a neat bow. And I think that's what I'm trying to do here because it's the penultimate line and I feel like it should like bring our story to uh, its natural conclusion. But it doesn't feel like I'm done with this person yet. When I'm gone, I will not be missed. No flowers will be thrown. No photos will be kissed. just sad it's just sad like grim but not in like a grisly way see i told you i told you i wasn't gonna go that direction and I, I don't ever go that direction that's my my brain doesn't go there all right so the last line is about loss wow and it is a four i can show you four of spades about loss and it is um What is your outlook? Which is a really interesting way to wrap up this 13 line poem. And it doesn't have to rhyme with anything. And like, I would really love because of who I am <laughs> to like, bring it back around and like have him be hopeful for the future and like know that he's going to be okay. But I also know that like the life that I have laid out for this dude is a hard one and is not like a 
hopeful. <laughs> so I think he he doesn't have a great outlook. And I think that the last line is just, I have never been more lost. Okay. All right. That is the 13 line poem. I am going to read the whole thing. Here we go. Here, here is, uh, here's the epithet that I have written for this, uh, this victim. For the family who was always down on their luck into homes and carriages and compartments, I have snuck. I passed on jobs to live on the road until I met the girl for whom time slowed. I gave up home. I can never go back. She promised adventure, but love is what I lack. I want to give her up, but she's got a vice on my heart. If I lose her, it will stop. And I don't know if it will restart. If I just missed that train, she would be a stranger. But with one look and one touch, I follow her into danger. When I am gone, I will not be missed. No flowers will be thrown. No photos will be kissed. I have never been more lost. So like that happened. That is the... That's it. He just shot his victim and then, you know, we'll put this on top. I would, I imagine that it's pretty scrawly. He doesn't seem like he has a, a nice handwriting. So it's, it's scrawled and is laid across the chest of this person. Um, next thing I got to do. Don't have to do it. Would like to do it is the section on poker play. Each time you finish a poem, look at your final array of 13 cards. And if you hold one of the following hands, approach your next poem with the suggested fictional position in mind. Okay. So let's let's split them up. Let's see what we got. Um, all right. So one of them is a royal flush. I do not have that. We do if we do like a, a five five card stud situation. Ten nine. Uh, I do have, let's see, I have a, I have a, a straight, so that, that is an option. I have a two pair, so that is an option. Making a little note, I have a, a straight. I have two pair. So then I also have uh, one pair. That's also an option. Um, do I have three of a kind? No, I do not have three of a kind. So that obviously means I do not have four of a kind or a full house. One, two, three, four, five, I do not have a flush. Goodness a straight flush or a royal flush. Okay. All right. So my options are you can't sleep. You haunt the night highway searching for something you haven't yet named. A pasty devours your, you day in and day out. You wish for reprieve, mercy, and redemption. Or the law, the mob, the ones you left behind, 
Someone is dogging your footsteps, hell-bent for leather. These are all excellent choices. Um, and I'm gonna throw it to the next person. Ha 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 ha. I don't have to choose. No, I do. Um, there is an option on here called The Call, where you play Gentleman Bandit as written solo. And then you post your poem to social media and you tag another player to create a poem based on your final poker hand. And I'm going to put this out. I'm going to put this poem out on, um, on my socials. And I'm going to challenge folks who are watching. I probably will tag a couple of people and just be like, hey, give this a shot. Um, as you can see, it's not a terribly long game. But I, you know what? I just, I find it really interesting. Because like... So a lot of the solo RPGs that I have played have been very much like journaling games, which I, I totally get. It it makes a lot of sense for there to be like, you draw a card and this is the choice that you have. And once you've made that choice, then you know you continue on in whatever fashion that happens. And you are writing down what has happened in your story. And so the idea that this particular game, you only have 13 lines to tell whatever story that you are coming up with. Um, and that it is in po poem form is like a really fun and interesting twist on it, I think. There are a couple of... Other options, I rolled that D6 at the beginning. There are a couple other modes. Uh, if I had rolled a two, then each line would need to have eight syllables or fewer. If I had rolled a three, I would have had to write in poetic meter, such as iambic pentameter. Uh, if I had rolled a four, four is craft six couplets following, followed by a one line summary, which I feel like is sort of what I ended up doing because that was the rhyme scheme that they had suggested in, in that first one. I suppose I could have done an A, B, A, B, A, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, if I wanted to, um, to do it that way. But like, I just, I just took. Just took the ones that, that they gave me as I was trying to get it up. Um, if I had rolled a five, it is include a word or phrase with a double meaning in every line, which is really interesting. And I think could could make this um, kind of pu a puzzler. You know, it could really get your brain going and you could... It could it could take m much longer. This could be a I'm going to have to come back to it kind of situation. Um, and then if I had rolled a six, I guess the dice was kind to me today. If I had rolled a six um, for each line, I would have rolled that D6 again. And I would have used one of the words for the co from the corresponding diction line, which is on this next page. Let me show you. There's a little chart here. Uh, there we go. Um, and uh, if we wanted to prescript your poem further, it says, choose the word that corresponds with the line number that you are writing. So if I was going to do line eight, I would roll roll my D6, and it's number two. So I would go to the second section here under diction, and I would go eight down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and I would have had to include the word coddle. Oh, wow. 
yeah, this would have been much more difficult. <laughs> um, these are just like some of them. Some of them would have been very difficult. Um, but what a really interesting challenge. Uh, there's also a couple of multiplayer options. So, uh, you know, I just told you about the call where I can do it and then I can uh, send it out online and then they, you know, whoever answers that call can then uh, create their own and then tag another person in it and like sort of pass it along. Could be really interesting. Uh, but... There's also something called Parlor Play, where you can do 2 to 13 players uh, all in the same place. And then everybody writes their own line. Well, like, if you have 13, you write your own line. Um, or you can, like, sort of divide up the lines however you would like. Um, also, a little, little like if you want to do that online, there's a way to do it to like a shared document or thread. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, and you can choose whether or not to see what the thing is that you have written. Like you could, you could write it all independently and then just put it together. Pretty cool. And then there's Arc of a Bandit, up to nine players in room or online, and you assign a poker hand to each player, and you roll a mode for the entire group, and then you, everybody writes their own poem, their own 13-line poem. And when everyone has finished, you share your poems in order of the poker hands. Um, royal royal flush being the best hand down to a pair being the, the worst hand. And it ends up sort of doing an arc for this gentleman bandit. Takes your gentleman bandit from the top of the world to the pits of despair or vice versa. Um, that's that's also very interesting like the idea that the that all nine poems well or up to nine poems are um about the same guy and it's like his his journey and where where does he end um yeah i chose this this sort of on a whim you know uh, i like I like a Western, I like a, a bandit sort of thievery story for those of you who have watched the show before. Like I am rogues forever, rogues for life. And so I feel like, you know, a gentleman bandit, like the ultimate rogue, like this highwayman. Um, I, I didn't, I was like, oh, you know, just we'll be writing a poem. That'll be fun. Um, which is really interesting. I really dug it. And I feel like I definitely could do it some more. It comes with like a something from an old newspaper. The gentleman bandit strikes again. Will this craven balladeer ever come to justice? Um gosh. They just like whoever wrote this article it super does not like <laughs> this gentleman bandit. Um but you know I I dig John Harper's stuff. I have played some of his stuff on the show before. Um we did Lady Blackbird on the show which was wonderful and I have played uh Blades in the Dark a lot. Uh, and so, you know, finding finding the game that got sort of a John Harper uh, stamp of approval, he did all of the um, all the layouts and the and the graphics for it was kind of enough for me to take a second look at it. And I don't know, I thought it was really interesting. 
I guess that's all of my moments of gratitude. And I know that this was not a, a super long episode, but I just really want to thank you all for like coming along with me on this journey in this, in this poetic, sad journey. Um, next week, we are going to be playing Witch by Elizabeth Chai Predictal and Steffi Devon. And they're both going to be here. And it's going to be rad. Um, it is about a coven who has made a deal with a demon and they're trying to get out of it because it's bad. It's real bad for everybody. <laughs> so we're going to um, kind of extend the Halloween season just a little bit for it. Because like, we don't have to give up on witches. Witches are, are definitely a year round situation here on Sarah's table, I think. Um, and then, uh, you know, before the end of the year, I've got some fun stuff in the works. I'm going to have a couple of, um, like two person RPGs that we're going to play. Maybe I will hit up another solo. Um, I am, I am chatting with people about bringing their stuff on. There's like a Jurassic Park game called Clever Girl. And I think you maybe some of the players get to beat the dinosaurs and that, this feels this feels right i feel like i should be doing that on my show um there's also a, a couple of one page ridiculous ones um by grant howitt that i just like can't not play because they're they just bring me so much joy so i think we're gonna we're gonna try out some of his new ones um to round out the year and and everything will be sort of like you know we'll do a little holiday theme situation because i i love christmas and i love holiday theming it's gonna be really fun um so yeah like like come back please <laughs> um i'm sarah moore you can find me all over the internet as Pixies and Pins, you can find me um, also on Facebook at Actor Sarah Moore because one of them had to be different. Um, you can go to my website, pixiesandpins.com. I'm hopefully going to get my shop up soon in time for the holidays. She says, hopefully. Um, it, now it's on the internet, so it has to be true. Uh, so that you can maybe pick up some Sarah's Table merch for, for Christmas presents. Um, treat yourself to like a Sarah's Table t-shirt or a mug. Um, you can you can get a t-shirt that says keep making art and keep being art because I think that's really important. You can get one that says hashtag joyful gaming. Um, maybe you just want to get a sticker and slap it on your laptop or like slap it on your forehead. I'm not going to judge you where you put it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good job, Sarah. Listen, um, I would like to thank, normally I thank my guests at my table, but um, it's just me today. So I guess I could thank me. I thank me for being here. Yeah. Um, and I thank you all at home for watching. And I would like to thank my uh, editor and partner, Jeff Moore, for helping me put this together so that it can go out onto your screens at home. And I would like to thank Marcus Mays for hitting that go button over at Gen Con TV. And I would like to thank Gen Con for giving me this platform where I get to highlight indie games that don't get a lot of eyeballs on them. And um, I definitely think everybody should try this game at home. I think everybody's got a little bit of a poet in them. Just like, give it a go. And then like tag me in your palm and uh, so I can see the, the beautiful, melancholy, sad stories that you have all come up with. Because I, I feel like we all want to keep creating. And I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's probably more. I think I've, I could probably thank more people. I think I could probably spend so long just, like, thanking people forever. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. 
think we're going to stop. Good talk. <laughs> Good talk, everybody. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, as always, keep making art and keep being art. We will see you next time. Mwah.